This is a light emitting diode or LED bulb. It's new lighting technology that gives out more light for the amount of power it consumes than conventional bulbs. It's also supposed to last longer and be safer because it's cool to the touch. This LED bulb does all that. But this one doesn't. It has a fake safety mark on it and it's on sale online now. As we're about to find out, plug this or any of these fake LED bulbs in and you might get more than you bargained for. Retired electronics engineer Derek Hawthorne from Hampshire wanted to update the lighting in his house. In a light bulb moment, he decided to replace the old light bulbs on his cooker with new LED bulbs. I thought it was just a matter of just picking the, the right size of lamp from an auction website, um, making sure that the, the wattage was, was about right, and plug it in and forget about it. Derek went ahead and ordered his LED bulbs on the internet. The package arrived, the lamps looked to be of reasonable quality, and I thought, well, this is, this is plug and play, fit and forget. So Derek did fit and forget about his new LED bulb. That is, until a few days later. I moved my hand, first of all, just underneath, and I could feel quite a lot of heat coming out. And then I moved my hand up and across the underneath of the cooker hood and received an electric shock. The jolt left Derek shaken, but luckily nothing more than that. As an electronic engineer, Derek knows a thing or two about wiring. As far as he was concerned, getting an electric shock from an LED bulb could mean only one thing. If I buy a lamp from a certified manufacturer, I don't expect to get any kind of an electric shock because a lamp or a bulb should be completely insulated from the electricity supply. The product purported to have met standards, but in fact was probably a fake because it didn't meet those standards. If an LED bulb with a CE mark gives you an electric shock, then the CE mark itself is probably fake. Concerned that they were dangerous, Derek got rid of his fake LED bulbs. So we brought him one that was almost identical to those he fitted. There are exposed connections here, here, and either side of every single LED is an exposed connection. There is no protection on the front of the lamp to stop you from touching any of these parts and receiving an electric shock. Derek had brushed against the top of a lamp similar to this one. He thinks he had a lucky escape, as the electric shock he received wasn't very powerful. But not everybody could be as fortunate. What would happen if my wife was cleaning underneath the cooker hood and she used a damp cloth and she would get a much more severe shock? If a component in the lamp were to fail, then the consequences could have been death. Derek also found himself thinking of the consequences of someone using a fake LED bulb like this one outdoors. That would have been potentially tragic because they would have suffered a lethal shock if in the event that the lamp had got wet. They are potentially hazardous and, and a risk to life. And what's very difficult for people to know whether they've got a product that's a fake or not. The fake LED bulb that we showed Derek was bought online. Disturbingly, it's just one of thousands of fake LED bulbs out there. Since a European Union ban on older style filament bulbs was phased in, demand for LED lamps has rapidly increased, as has the production of the fakes. Suffolk Trading Standard sees this pile of fake LED bulbs on their way from China into the UK through the port of Felixstowe. Many are almost identical to the one that gave Derek Hawthorne his nasty shock. Over here, we've got nearly a 1,000 um, LED bulbs, uh, which are just part of a larger consignment. The problem with these is that they've got uh, fake CE marks. Uh, by that, I mean it's either been misapplied, or in this instance, the CE mark itself doesn't actually meet the criteria which it should, so they're fake. With their fake CE markings, these LED bulbs could be dangerous, but we wanted to find out just how dangerous the fakes can be. So we went to leading test house, Intertech, to meet electrical safety expert Steve Kirtler. How can you tell the difference between a genuine and a fake LED bulb? We can see on genuine that there's a cover over the LED lamp and the LED array itself and any connections, which means I can't 
put my finger onto anything that might have dangerous voltages. Steve ordered an LED bulb on the internet, identical to the one that shocked Derek Hawthorne. At first glance, he's concerned. You can actually unscrew the lamp itself and get access to live parts, hazardous parts. No lamp should be able to be taken apart purely by unscrewing it. Easy access to dangerous wiring can mean only one thing for the CE and other safety markings on this bulb. We've got a problem here that has the potential to kill somebody. Um, and there's no way that genuine manufacturers would produce, manufacture anything that could come apart as easy as that. There's no doubt that the safety marks that have been applied onto this lamp are indeed false, fake. With the testing, Steve hopes to put his finger on the problem. Well, not his finger, exactly. And we're going to be using a laboratory test finger to simulate someone actually touching the outside of the lamp. The artificial finger will be connected to a lamp that represents the human body. If that's to light up, then we know that there's a voltage and a current there, and then we want to see how dangerous that voltage and current is. First, Steve will test a genuine LED lamp. OK, then, Mike, when you're ready. So we're touching the lamp wherever we can with the test finger. The lamp's not coming on. We're not getting any dangerous voltages. We're getting no voltages at all, in fact. The genuine LED lamp has passed the test with flying colours. Now, what about the LED lamp that Steve bought from an online store? To pass the safety test, the voltage on the surface of this LED bulb, which someone could feasibly touch, must not exceed 60 volts, and the current, 2 milliamps. It's an immediate result for the fake LED bulb. We've got way over the 60 volt limit, 178 volts. It's failed spectacularly. This isn't just slightly over the voltage limits, this is way over about three times the amount. Um, so that, that's extremely hazardous. And the same for the current 91 milliamps. So that is extremely dangerous. And we could easily get a fatal electric shock from this scenario. Steve has all the information he needs to pass final judgment on this fake. Clearly the bulb's never been tested before. It's marked up with all the safety marks to say that it has been. So those marks are fake, the lamp's fake. It's seriously dangerous um, and potentially life-threatening. Anyone fitting a fake LED lamp like this in their house could be lucky only to walk away with a minor electric shock. But Steve's not finished. There's another suspected fake lamp he'd like to test, and it's a big one. This could be fitted in a shop, school, or other public area. They run the test, and Steve's astonished by the results. We've got voltage of 203 volts, which is nearly mains voltage, which is ridiculous. Um, extremely hazardous voltage there. That's nearly four times the limit. 97 milliamps. Fatal electric shock waiting to happen if you were to touch that when it was in the lamp fitting itself. So, unfortunately, another fake. The fake LED lamps that Steve tested today could kill. Some of them, like this one, have come from the shipment seized by Suffolk Trading Standards. After these and other tests, Suffolk Trading Standards are taking drastic action to ensure the fake LED bulbs they've seized will never be able to harm anyone. So these fake LED bulbs are going to be destroyed. The reason we do destroy these things is because they're unsafe. It's a dangerous product and can't be allowed um, for sale within the EU.